Hi, I'm Adam Hobson, Application Development Manager with Insitu. Today, we're going to talk about low flow sampling and the equipment that you use for it. To start off with, we have a water level meter. This is used to measure our depth of water, both before sampling and to measure drawdown while you're sampling. We also have a pump. In this case, we're using a peristaltic pump. However, other pumps can be used. The pump is connected to the tubing that goes down our well, comes through our pump head, through a sampling T, and then also through a check valve to prevent backflow. That water then flows up into a flow cell where a multi-parameter sonde is, and then ultimately out into a bucket where it's discharged. Now, for low flow sampling, one of the most important things you can measure is the stabilization of your water quality uh, parameters. In this case, we're gonna be using a multi-parameter sonde for that. Now, for this meter, we actually can connect to it via Bluetooth using a mobile device and a mobile app on here. Before we talk about the mobile app, let's take a closer look at the multi-parameter sonde. The Aquatrol 600 has four sensor ports on it. You take off this restrictor, and we have our sensors on the end. In this case, we have dissolved oxygen, turbidity, pH and ORP, and temperature and conductivity. You'll notice in this case, the sensors are flat-faced. This has several advantages. One in particular is with calibration. If we put the restrictor back on and turn it over and take the end cap off, we now have a low volume calibration cup. In this case, the amount of calibration fluid required is usually between 30 and 50 milliliters, much less than any other sensor. Now, let's take a look at how we'd actually install this with the flow cell. So this is our flow cell. As you'll notice, it's designed to be set at an angle. The reason for that is to, to prevent bubbles from building up on the sensor when it's installed. To set this up, you actually have to install these, these stakes or spikes um, that actually just thread into the bottom here. There's a collar on the top here that you will need to unscrew, and then this will actually end up going onto the multi-parameter sonde. Okay, so to connect the multi-parameter sonde to the flow cell, we first remove the end cap. And then we have to flip the restrictor around. So we have the holes on the bottom side. We then take the ring and slide that on over the restrictor. And then we take the flow cell and we insert the multi-parameter sonde in there. It's a snug fit and it's supposed to be. There's threads in the bottom of this. So we actually thread the multi-parameter meter in there and we tighten the collar down to where it's snug and therefore watertight. And we're ready to go. Now that we've seen some of the equipment, let's take a look at how we can view and manage the data. Under the right conditions, low flow purging can be a good method for collecting representative groundwater samples. However, it requires attention to detail and good data management. In order to make low flow sampling easier, we developed View Situ, a mobile app for our instruments with a workflow management feature developed specifically for low flow purging and sampling. Traditional dedicated handhelds are expensive, difficult to use, and require manuals to understand, and aren't internet connected. ViewSitu is a free app for Android and iOS, so you can use it on your mobile device, and there's no need for a specialized handheld. It connects via Bluetooth or a cabled connection to the multi-parameter sonde, and currently supports over a dozen languages. When you first connect to View Situ with a multi-parameter sonde, you'll see the home screen where you can navigate to other parts of the app. View Situ is like many other apps on your mobile device. It's designed to be intuitive, so there's no need for a user manual. Feel free to click around and explore. If you ever have any questions, you can always tap in the upper right corner to bring up links to frequently asked questions and to call our 24 seven tech support. At the top, there's information on the connected instrument, including remaining battery, available memory, and the instrument time. This is also where you can check if the instrument and sensor software is up to date, but the app will let you know if it's not when you connect to the instrument. In the bottom half are other buttons that will take you to live readings, logging, calibrations, instrument settings, 
and where you can disconnect from the instrument. Okay, let's see how the app works for low flow purging and sampling. First, we'll select the drop down menu in the upper right corner. This brings up a few options, including low flow testing. Tap that to open the low flow feature. Under low flow testing, you'll see the option to add a new test, as well as see a list of all the events on your device. If you tap on new test, you'll have the option to set up a new blank test or duplicate a previous one. Duplicating previous tests saves you time since much of the static information will already be entered. In this case, let's duplicate a previous test. Now you'll see four tabs across the top for Setup, Criteria, Well, and Details. This is where you can enter all the static information for the well. On the Setup tab, the flow cell volume is set to 130 milliliters which is the volume of the flow cell that worked with our Aquatrol 500 and 600 multi-parameter signs. This is the lowest volume flow cell on the market, which means turning over system volumes will happen faster and parameters can be measured on a shorter frequency, which can save you time. The most important value on the setup tab is the sample interval. Once this is set, monitoring can begin. The other information can be populated later while you're waiting for the parameters to stabilize. Speaking of stabilization, the Criteria tab is where you can enter the acceptable ranges of the previous three measurements. If you don't want to stabilize on a parameter, you can uncheck it. Also, you can change the criteria while purging, but then the stabilization calculation resets. Under the Well tab, you can enter basic well construction information that is relevant to low flow sampling. This is, good, this is a good example of information that could carry over between sampling events. By duplicating a previous test, you don't need to re-enter it the next time you sample this well. The Details tab is where you can enter information on the pump and tubing, as well as freeform fields for weather conditions and test notes. When you're ready to start recording data, tap Start. You'll get a warning to make sure the flow cell is full before continuing. Starting the test without a full flow cell will extend the time it takes to stabilize, as your initial readings may be incorrect. Tap Continue to start the test. When the test is running, there are two ways to view the data. In portrait mode, live readings are at the top and recorded values are at the bottom. For depth of water and flow values, you can edit them manually as you make those measurements. At the bottom of the screen, you can tap Edit Properties to change the information on the previous tabs while the test is running, or tap Finish Test to, well, you guessed it, finish the test. If you rotate the display, you can now see all the parameters at once. Like portrait mode, you can still edit depth of water and flow measurements. As purging continues, operational and indicator parameters are measured and evaluated against the stabilization criteria. Once a parameter stabilizes, it turns green. Here, we can see that pH, temperature, specific conductivity, and DO have stabilized early, but turbidity and ORP have not. Moving further along, we see that ORP stabilizes, but the turbidity is still changing. Going out to 16 minutes, we finally see that turbidity is stabilized and at a much higher value than initial measurements would have indicated. Now that all parameters are stable, it's time to collect a sample. Once samples have been collected, rotate the device back to portrait. To finish the test, tap Finish Test. A warning will come up asking you if you really want to finish the test. We put this in here to minimize the chance that a sampler will accidentally stop a test and lose all their work. If everything looks good, tap Finish. Next, you can enter information about samples. The fields are freeform, so you can add as much information as you'd like. You can add multiple samples, so you can have one entry for each bottle or analyte, or one for the entire sampling suite. When you're done entering sampling information, tap Save. Here, you can enter final drawdown and flow rate values. Total volume pumped is populated with the calculated value based on the entered flow rates and total elapsed time. 
You can also enter any test notes that may be valuable. When you're ready, tap complete. View Situ then creates a report which can be saved to the device, cloud storage, or email, depending on what apps you have on your device. And finally, the report contains all the data and information recorded during sampling. It's available as both an HTM file and a PDF, so it's ready for review to be placed in a report or for analysis in a spreadsheet or database.